Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I recently posted a video in which I showed how to wire a GFCI outlet and a protected outlet. Today I will explain how to wire a GFC outlet and light fixture on the same circuit. But in this case, both the GFCI outlet and the light fixture will be working independently. This is a common scenario in a bathroom where we have one power line and that goes to the GFCI outlet first and then goes to the light switch. We don't want to lose power in case the GFCI gets reset. That means both the GFCI and the light switch must be connected independently to the incoming power line. And this is what I am going to show you in today's video. Stay tuned and watch the video until the end to see how I complete this project. So let's get started. This is an important caution. The procedure shown in this video is for information and education purposes only. If you are not comfortable working with electrical wiring or electrical equipment, I would strongly suggest that you hire a licensed electrician. Before undertaking any kind of electrical work, always make sure that you follow your local electrical safety code. Safety first, we always start by making sure that there is no power in any of these wires. I will use my client tools touchless voltage tester to make sure that there is no power in any of the wires. Turn it on. There is no power, so it is safe to proceed. So I have here this 14-2 wire, which is bringing in power to the outlet box. Another 14-2 wire is going to the switch box. And from the switch box, a 14-2 wire goes to the light fixture. I'll put a lamp here for my testing. For the purpose of this video, I will be using a Leviton Decora style slim GFCI outlet. This one is rated 15 amps and 125 volts. In case you are working in a kitchen and you have a 20 amp circuit, then make sure you get the 20 amp GFCI receptacle. And in case of 20 amp circuit, you will notice that the wire is also 12 gauge wire or 12 to wire instead of 14 to wire. So make sure you have selected the correct GFCI outlet. On the back side of this GFCI receptacle, we have caution tape, a yellow tape, which says that the line should be connected on top to the top terminals and any load should be connected to the bottom terminals. Failure to follow these instructions may result in unprotected outlet. I will remove the tape and show you. Now we have two brass screws here. We connect the black hot wire here and the black load wire here in case we want the other outlets on the same line to be protected. On this side we have two silver screws. We connect the white neutral wires on this side. The incoming white neutral to this terminal and the outgoing white neutral going to the load is connected here. In case there is a problem with the wiring, for example, somebody connects the line wires here and load wires here, the reset button will not work. The entire outlet will be left unprotected. So make sure the wiring is correct. Starting from this side, to distinguish between two black hot wires, I have used a yellow sticker which says in to this black hot wire. Now I am sure that this is my line wire and this is my load wire. I will use a 5 pin Vago Lavanut connector to connect all ground wires. These are all my ground wires. One from the 14-2 wire going to the switch box. Second from the 14-2 wire which brings in power to the outlet box. Third one is the ground pigtail which connects to the outlet box. And, and fourth one is the ground wire connected to the GFCI outlet. Next, I will connect the white neutral wires. Here I have white neutral from the 14-2 wire going to the switch box, white neutral from the line in, and I will use a white pigtail to connect the GFCI outlet. I will use a 3-pin Vago 11 nut connector to connect all white wires. Next, I will connect the black hot wires. Here I have one black hot wire which goes to the switch box, one black hot wire which brings in power to the outlet box and I will use a black pigtail which I will connect to the GFCI outlet. Once again I will use 3 pin Vago 11 nut connector to connect all black wires. This black pigtail will be connected to the top brass terminal of the GFCI outlet. Next, I will work on the single pole light switch. For the purpose of this video, I am using a Leviton Decora style single pole light switch. If you are using a traditional toggle switch, the connections would be similar. 
connecting the ground wires first. I have one ground wire from this 14 to one ground wire from this 14 to which goes to the light fixture. This one ground wire which connects to the metal outlet box and I will use a ground pigtail to connect the light switch. Once again, I will use a 5-pin Vago 11 nut connector to connect all ground wires. I will connect this pigtail to the green ground terminal of the switch. Push these wires inside. Next, I will use a 3-pin Vago 11 nut connector to connect white neutral wires. and push them inside. Next, I will connect the black hot wires. These wires can be connected to any of these two terminals, but normally the wire that brings in power is connected at the bottom. So this wire is from this 14 to, this is bringing in power to the switch, I will connect that at the bottom. This black wire is from this 14 to, which goes to the light fixture. This is connected at top. Connections are done. Let's take another look at how we connected the GFCI outlet. I have used a 5-pin Vago 11 nut connector to connect all ground wires. One from this 42 wire which brings in power to the outlet box. One ground wire from this 42 which goes to the light fixture. One ground wire which connects to the metal outlet box. And one ground pigtail which connects to the green grounding terminal of the GFCI. In this 3-pin Vago 11 nut connector, I have three white neutral wires. One white neutral is from this 14 to wire, one white neutral is from this 14 to wire and one white pigtail which connects to the silver terminal of the GFCI outlet. On this side, I have a 3-pin Vago 11 nut connector which connects all black hot wires. One black hot wire from this 14 to wire which brings in power to the outlet box. Another black hot wire which is from this 14 to wire and it goes to the switch and a ground pigtail which connects to the line terminal of the GFCI outlet. Now here is an important point. I am not using the load terminals of this GFCI outlet because I don't want the light to be turned off in case the GFCI gets reset. And that's why the light switch is directly connected to the incoming 14 to wire through these Vago 11 nut connectors. The GFCI outlet and the light switch will be working independently. In case the GFCI outlet gets reset due to moisture, due to leakage of current, the light will still keep working. I can now push these wires into the metal boxes and tighten these screws. I will now turn on the power and test my connections. Power is on. Let's check the outlet first. I will use my Sperry GFCI outlet tester to check the GFCI outlet. These two orange lights indicate that the outlet is working fine. I have a GFCI test button here. I can press this and this should be off. The outlet is off now. I can reset it from the red reset button. Check this out. Press the red reset button and the power is on. There is a small green LED indicator here which shows that the GFCI outlet is in good working condition. We can check the upper one also. Good. Off. Take it out. Press the red reset button and it is on again. Let's check the light. On. Off. On. Next, I want to make sure that the light still remains on when the GFCI gets reset. The GFCI outlet is on now, but if I reset this, only the outlet will lose power. The light will still remain on. That means both the GFCI and the light switch, they are working independently. So this project is complete now. I hope the video was helpful. It was informative. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up 
and consider subscribing to the channel. There are several other similar DIY videos on my channel. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, please take care.